What's going on YouTube? We are back in Lightroom with some new Fuji X-T2 files. Now these files I actually took uh, when I was on vacation with my wife in Italy. This is over on Burano Island in Venice and I just saw this scene and I knew it was high contrast and I thought it would be a great opportunity to use to test the dynamic range of the Fuji X-T2 files because I had been hearing some pretty impressive numbers comparing to like the Sony a7R 2 and the Nikon D810. However, the leading place to actually view information about dynamic range, DxO Mark, does not actually check uh, X-Trans sensors. It basically, I don't know, I guess they don't know how or don't use a technology that works with their type of sensors. So the best we can do really is kind of analyze it for ourselves. And uh, yeah, I want to see uh, what kind of results I would get. So I've got kind of a gamut of eight, I think, yeah, eight stops here. Um, of just going up on the same exact scene. They're not on a tripod or anything, so there's a little bit of variance, but just want to see what we get out of that. So here is kind of like a base exposure, and I'm going to go all the way down to this one, which is right about four and a half, five stops underexposed, and I'm just going to push it five stops and bring it over into the compare module so that we can kind of see when we zoom in here, what we're looking at um, in terms of a comparison. So let's go right here. I like it because it's got multiple colors. We've got those blacks that were in it that are absolute shadows. Now you can see on the right here, this is a properly exposed image. On the left, this is the five stops underexposed. And I'm really impressed. It actually pushed, it caught all the detail in even the darkest, darkest spots in the blacks. You could probably push it even more than five stops. The one thing that I see that is a huge difference is in the noise, that's pretty much it. In terms of color, it actually came back really well, but we did bring introduce some noise at this uh, level. But the good thing is it's, it's grain. It's not necessarily color noise. So, you know, it's really easy to work with. If we come back into the develop module and come down here to the detail menu and we just bring up that luminance into like the 20s I think uh, we'll have a much more similar result so I'm gonna go back into the compare module in library and alright as you can see now they are much more similar we would probably have to add a little bit of sharpening just to kinda of get them to look really similar but the point is at negative five stops five stops underexposed with your shadows we are still getting a really good file and that would definitely secure all our highlights. So if you are one of those natural light file pushers, you know, you bring your exposure down four stops, capture detail in the sky, then you bring your exposure up and then recover your highlights. Um, this is going to work great for you. I mean, this is, we're talking 13 and a half, 14 stops is what it's rated for. Now it's a, not quite as flexible in the highlights. So let's go back into the develop module. I'm just going to look at the highlights in the actual base exposure. So let's zoom in right about here. As you can see, there's no detail on the uh, top of this boat right here. So we're going to see if we can get any of that detail back in there. And no. So that's completely overcooked, gone forever. Looks like this is still too much, which is why you would want to underexpose in this situation. Now I think this is actually the file that once I pull back, yep, you can see uh, the base exposure on this file. This is like right here to right here. There's no detail on this edge right here, nor can you really see the color of this building that's being hit by the sun. But once we actually bring that exposure down, we very, very slightly see the shape of this white trim to the side of the building. Uh, we can now actually see that faint line, the detail and the color change into the side of the building. So it actually keeps some of the color. Now up on the boat lid, we actually have some detail. So we're only looking about two thirds of a stop, one stop right in that range to uh, recover highlights. And it's kind of the same story in the sky as well. Let's go back to one stop overexposed. As you can see in the top right corner, if we bring it down, we start getting a little of that color back in the sky that was initially overcooked and blown out. So the math on this, uh, we're looking at about one at the top, five at the bottom, brings us over 13 stops. Uh, they say 14 stops is uh, around the highest that you'll, you'll get out of it. Obviously the scene um, and the details that you're trying to capture are gonna have a big piece on that, but the point is is that 
you have so much flexibility with these files. There will be a Dropbox link in the description if you guys would like to download these sample raw files yourself so that you can play with them and check them out. I hope that this helped you out guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, let me know why and subscribe for more. Other than that, I'll see you next time YouTube.